this video, we will show how our St. Patrick's Day cache was constructed. If you haven't seen the original video tour of that cache, click on the link now, or wait until the end of this video and we'll post the link again. The construction of this cache began with a piece of 1x16 poplar. On the board, we sketched out the outlines for the front, the back, and the door. Mike cut out the door using a jigsaw. He cut out the shamrock window using a Dremel tool, then beveled the edges using the router attachment. Here we set the hardware in place to see how everything fits. And then Mike marked all the holes for drilling. After cutting out both the front and back pieces from the poplar, Mike attached the front to the bucket with metal brackets. Using 1x2s, he built a frame around the bucket attaching the back to the frame. This way, no holes were drilled into the interior of the bucket, keeping it weatherproof. After the frame was in place, we began to attach the wire mesh. Using a staple gun, Mike attached the wire mesh to the 1x2s and to the edges of the front and back. Once the mesh was in place, Mike cut it and shaped it using pliers to fold the sharp edges in, which also gave it additional strength. Our vision for our design was to create a fallen log broken off with ragged edges. Then it was time to inject the foam fill. He inserted the nozzle between the wire mesh and the bucket, deliberately overfilling it so that the foam would expand and engulf the full frame, including the 1x2s underneath. Anyone who's ever used expansion foam could predict what happened next. The foam grew... and grew... and continued to grow until it looked kind of like a sheep. Once the foam fill was dry, then the trimming process began. Yes, that's an electric knife like you'd use to carve a turkey. Mike said for me to caution the handyman out there, if you're planning to attempt this, spend the 10 bucks and buy a new electric knife. Don't go in the kitchen and take your wife's turkey knife. I can assure you she won't be happy. At this point, the project went outside. Mike generated a huge cloud of dust as he used a disc sander, working toward creating the right shape. With his artful sanding complete, it's really starting to look like a log. With the smallest drum sander attachment on his Dremel tool, Mike started to cut in some detail. Any imperfections that were still in the foam, he used them to make knots, crafting the grain of the bark around them. When he was satisfied with the texture of the bark, it was ready for a coat of sealer. Mike knew that any time he was working with a petroleum-based foam, including foam fill or styrofoam, he'd have to be careful that his paint did not contain chemicals, such as acetone, that would actually melt it. For this project, he used elastomeric roof coating, which is a white sealant often used on mobile homes. The white coating really brought out the texture of the bark. Then the first coat of paint he applied was a brownish gray. Again, it was a water-based latex paint. Then he brushed on a lighter shade of the same color, keeping it only on the outer level, leaving the grooves still painted the darker shade. Here's a close-up of the texture of the bark. He included wood grain details on the back, even though we knew it wouldn't show. Now that the bark was done, it was time to finish the leprechaun's house. 
deep inside, it's still a five gallon bucket. To the door, Mike applied green stain and then a coating of special polyurethane for outdoor use. On the inside of the door, he inlaid an Irish blessing. Every leprechaun home should have an Irish blessing. This photo shows an almost completed St. Patrick's Day cache. When we took it out to the woods, we brought several colors of paint and some sponges with us so that we could adjust the appearance of the bark to match the surrounding trees. Inside the door, Mike attached a piece of a clear CD jewel case to make a window behind the shamrock cutout, helping to seal the cache from moisture. Our leprechaun's name and address on a hanging plaque outside the door indicate that his first name begins with G. We found out that it's Gilby. Gilby O'Cash. Yep, that's his name. Inside the cache, we hid a leprechaun's pot of gold. Gold that was mostly green. We chose to prop the container up on a real fallen log to give cashers easier access to the door. It was for this reason that the upper overhang in front was designed to be almost six inches long so that it would still shield the door from the weather. With the placement of some fake blooming clover and a tiny leprechaun, our magical St. Patrick's Day cache was finally ready for visitors. Thank you so much for watching this video about how our St. Patrick's Day cache was made. If you still haven't viewed the cache tour video, just click on the link.